everyone. Uh, welcome to another uh, edition of Now We Talk. We're going to get going in one minute here. We're just going to let this uh, sit on the screen for a second so you can see what is upcoming on uh, future talks. Of course, there's other topics as well. And if you ever have a eureka moment where you're thinking, boy, I wish we could talk about this, just send me an email, thedoran at nowie.org, and we'll happily try to slot that in. Um, without further ado, we're going to move on to our presentation today. Today, we're going to be talking about what I like to call the Mini 3 Marketing Plan. It's a concept that was brought to me many years ago, and I kind of gave it the name because it didn't really have a name. And we're going to go through that and just see how that can help you in your particular business. Today's session, my goal is that at the end, you'll be able to use this system, build your own system that's going to work for you. And you, the whole goal is to bring more students, more sales to your store, to your you as an independent instructor, or you as a uh, professional educator, college, university, whatever the case is. And the key is, is that we all need students and we don't have students. What is it we're doing here at Nowy? So that's the whole point today. So let's see if we can come up with a couple ideas that are going to work for you. To accomplish the task, I'm going to break it into these few categories here. First of all, what is this mini three thing that Bill keeps talking about? Why do I need one? What are the threes? How are you going to build your stuff? And we're going to actually actually build a couple just so you can see how they work. So without further ado, let's uh, start talking about it. So what is this mini three marketing plan? The short answer is you do things in three. If I ended right now, I think you might be a little disappointed. So let's talk about it a little bit more. The secret is coming up with something that you're going to do three times a day consistently with repetition. And the key here is those two words, consistency and repetition. As we look at this mini marketing plan, many people are going to go, well, I don't have a multi-million dollar budget. I don't have thousands of dollars per week or per month. I don't have one or three or a whole department full of people that can help me work in my marketing. Excellent. Um, this works for you then. At the same token, if you do have a department of people and you do have a budget, guess what? This works for you. So it's something that's expandable and reliable that will work. Again, I've used it for over 30 years. Many years ago, I sat at this conference and this guy started by telling me something. Hey, whenever you do this, when you're seeing somebody, don't give them a business card, give them three. I'm going to talk a bit about that in a little bit, uh, time now. But that guy kind of give them three cards. Why? It cost me money to buy those cards. I was in business for myself. And then he explained it and I kind of went, ah, oh, I get the three. So that's what we're going to talk about today and just see how this is going to possibly work for you. First of all, that, you know, it's for any size of organization. It, it's for any budget. The key is, is we need to adjust it for what you are going to need, whether you're a you know, two penny budget or your $2 million budget, you need to find something that's going to work for you. And it's not just about the size of you. It's not just about the budget you have. Depending on the location, it could work too. We need to adjust it. Whether you're in a hot spot, awesome tourist area where everybody wants to travel. And I assure you, I live in Barrie, Ontario, Canada. That's not one of those areas. Believe it or not, everybody's not flying to Barrie, Ontario to dive in Lake Simcoe. I happen to live here, so I do, and we have a lot of fun, but my, my version of hotspot is somewhere else. So how do I attract people to come dive with us here locally? And that's the key. You need to tailor this to be a consistent, reliable way that you're going to do the same thing with re repetition and consistency. So location will matter to what you decide to do, just like your budget and just like your size will dictate what's going to work for you. The whole goal here is we want to bring students into your store or into your club, or into your educational facility, or to you as an independent instructor. That's the key is set those goals to make sure this is going to work for you. We need to attract customers. If you know, sometimes people take a uh, small little one course business course, or sometimes they have a passion in an industry, for instance, diving. Boy, oh boy, I really like diving. I'd like to start my own business. And that's great. We're here to help. And this is one of many episodes that we're putting in this Now We Talk series about helping you to build your business. And the key is, is we need to know that 
I am in business, whether I'm an independent instructor, college, university, whether I'm a store or whether I'm a club, you need to run it like a business or you just aren't going to make it. So we need to know we have to track customers, track them as much as I think I'm supersonic having a great time diving here in Lake Simcoe. I need to understand that not everybody sees that. When they're watching the television or YouTube or some other wonderful social media or platform, they're probably not focusing on the dives here beside me. They're focusing on dives perhaps in the Caribbean and the Red Sea. Oh, I've seen some spectacular stuff from Thailand and Australia from my friend Nelson over there. There's lots of things that I see. I rarely see my area unless I look for my area specifically. So the key is we have to understand it's my job as that instructor, as that store, or as that college, university, or club to pull that customer into me, give them a reason to come to me. So that's really why we need a, a mini three plan. Frankly, we need a business plan. We need a marketing plan. Today is just one little piece called the mini three. What are the truths? Before we do that, we need to talk about all the excuses that I've heard over the years, and they're legitimate ones. Perhaps somebody says they're shy. I've never had to use that one. People usually tell me on the other side of that equation, Bill's talk last. But somebody says, I'm shy. I don't like to speak in public. I don't like to be on camera. I don't have the staff. I don't have the money. I love when people tell me they don't have the time. Did you know that we all have 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, and 365 days in a year? We all have the exact same amount of time. How are you going to prioritize your time is really the answer here. And there's no sense prioritizing time to something that's not going to work. For me to tell everybody that I'm going to be a fashion model for hairstyles, perhaps it's not going to work. Let's come to something that's going to work for me. In case you didn't notice, that's why. Now, having said that, dealing with those objections for yourself is the big issue here. You need to decide what you can do and what you can't do, and then focus on your mission. Those of you that have heard me speak in other times have heard me use the word mission. Um, I think it's a powerful and very accurate word for marketing. What is the mission I'm trying to accomplish here? In our case, locally, I want divers to come, learn to dive with us, come out and continue diving with us and do continued education with us. And hey, guess what? We sell scuba gear. So my mission is to get them out, get them using scuba gear and getting them excited about learning more about scuba and developing that passion that I have. That's a pretty good mission. Perhaps you have a shorter one, a longer one, a narrower scope of description or a wider. Makes no difference. Stop and write it down and go over it and detail it until it makes sense to you. This is my mission. And that mission doesn't have to be the same mission for the next 10 years. It could be a one week, one month, three month, one year, two year, five year, or 10 year plan. Good businesses have a, a business plan that hits several of those targets. Okay, I'm not using one for one week plans, but that's okay. If we're just getting started, try it for a week and see what happens. So. Pick a plan that's going to match your mission. The mission has to be defined as what you're trying to accomplish and a time frame with which you're going to accomplish. And then we can pick the threes that match that mission plan. So let's look at the threes, because I'm sure everybody's going, what the heck are these threes? Anytime we do things, do them in threes. That's pretty much the, the, the nuts and bolts of this program. One idea is when you give out a business card, give them in threes. Now, I mentioned earlier, that came to me from a talk I was at once, and I thought, I had to buy my own business cards. Man, if I give them out like that, it's going to cost me extra money. And his answer to that question was, what does it cost you when you give a guy a card, and that lady says, wow, this is really cool, I want to learn to dive. And then one of three things can happen. They respond on that card by calling you, or they lose it and nothing happens. Or they're talking to their friend, Jane, and Jane says, wow, that's really cool. I'm wanted to too. And they go, oh, here, Jane, here's the card. Now, again, they have no way to follow up with me. So by giving them three cards, A, they're less likely to lose it. I mean, 
having three cards in your possession is probably more likely to be found, noticed, or stand out than one. Two is they have the ability to give one to a friend. And three is it's small enough number that they don't think you're wasting. You hand them 25 or 30 cards, it's, like, it's just not gonna work. It seems wasteful, it seems foolish, and they don't, I don't wanna carry this handful of stuff around, out it goes. But one card can get lost in a person's pocket, in their wallet, in their purse, between the seats in the car, whatever it happens to be. So give three business cards. And I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if this guy's right. Seemed to be an older guy to me. I was probably about 24 at the time. And I thought, I don't know, maybe that's old school. Maybe it works out. So what I did was I embarked. I'm going to hand out three to everybody I did. And guess what? He was right. It worked. I got return phone calls. So I thought, well, if that works in three, what else can work in three? Tell three people what you do. So every day of my life, I try to find three people. Now, if it's a Sunday and you're staying at home with your feet up and talking to the dog, she probably doesn't want you to say, because she's heard all that before. But if you're out in public, it's easy to talk about what you do. Just tell three people while I go scuba diving. A lot of people are interested in scuba diving. Again, this doesn't apply to just scuba, but today we're talking scuba. Now, what if... You're a little shy, say, well, I'm not a salesperson. This isn't gonna work for me. What is it that you love about scuba? Perhaps it's the fish in your area, shipwrecks in your area, reef formations. Perhaps it's scientific diving, saving the oceans. There's a reason you're diving. There's a reason you're on this call right now. The reason is the one you wanna pick. Don't try to be somebody you're not, because if you're false, or fake, it shows. Purity is always gonna work. The passion I have for what I do. Oh, wow, you should have seen, like this is a true story. The other day I was out, just two days ago I was out, I saw a bass that was about 22 inches long. It was awesome. And it just hung there, tried to hide right beside the mast. There's a mast on the shipwreck that was down and it was hanging right on the edge. And I almost missed it because the coloring was, tying in and then I saw something move a little and I just could describe that fish to you a little bit more but that's my intro when I talk to somebody oh wow you should have seen the 22 inch bass I saw the other day and then visually show them what's 22 inches going to look like I have to get my hands in narrow because I'm on the screen but you know what 22 inches is for most people this is about eight to nine inches maybe seven or eight depending on the size of you so you can say, well, it's like two of these or four of these and just kind of go like that for people. And that's an exciting way to talk to people today about that fish. Now, maybe none of them are interested in scuba, but if I tell three people every day, by the end of the week, there's something going, wow, I always wanted to learn how to dive. What a coincidence, I teach that. So tell three people every day what you do. Just make it something fun that you're passionate about. Wow, my favorite dive my favorite shipwreck, my favorite destination, just pick something. That's highly similar to the next point, we just tell about some cool dive experience, some really neat experience. So you can say, I'm a scuba instructor, or you can say, here's an experience that's really fun. Make it passionate that you can talk about at least three times a day. And personally, I see these as two different things. Tell three people what I do, Tell three people something really exciting that I've done recently. Send out three emails. We all have a database. You've been teaching, if you've been teaching a week, you may not have a big one for diving, but if you've been teaching for a few years, you've got people you've taught. Send them out an email. Running a dive on Saturday. We're going to dive and have hot dogs afterwards on the beach. Send three emails. Three, if you send three a day, seven times three, 21. If only five people or four people showed up, you have four people coming out to dive. Those people buy air, those people buy courses, those people buy experiences to come out with us. Again, what was your mission that you're looking to accomplish? In my case, it was a mission to get them out, get them out, doing continued education and using scuba gear that I supply. So getting them out to that beach to have a hot dog and a dive would accomplish that mission. 
And if every week I got four more people out after 10 weeks, that's 40 people. Oh my goodness, you're probably overwhelmed. And it does add up. And you may say, well, I only get one a week. Fine. One extra person, 10 weeks in a row, you have 10 people coming out playing to come out and have that experience. Send out some social media posts. Some of us are more versed in social media than others. I'm fortunate that I have a couple of people that know a lot about social media, so I can ask them questions. And if you don't, find somebody. Whether you like it, share it, whether you create your own, that depends on your mission. But get that out three times, three times every day. Do not engage in the negativity that can be found out there. Be the positive person. Now, what's your mission? Is my mission to be to pontificate and to be an expert on all that is wrong in the world? No. In my case, I want people to come out, dive locally, do continued education, and buy scuba gear. How do I get them to come out and accomplish those three tasks? By getting them to come out and have fun. And fun and happy doesn't go with negativity. So pick your mission and stick to your mission. It could just be a really cool picture of a bass. It could be a picture of the J.C. Morrison shipwreck offshore. You know your area, pick something that you know you can make fun. Um, one of uh, dive masters locally, uh, Crystal, she took me on what I would consider the best tour of a dive site that frankly I built, as well as others, I'm not the only one, many years ago, a bit of a scuba park locally. And as a dive master on the course, I make them all take me on a guided dive and entertain me. She entertained me on a dive that I'd done a bazillion times. Why? Because she was focused on a mission of getting people out to dive, getting them into continuing education. How did you find all those things? Oh, well, Bill teaches a navigation course. And guess what? Anybody on a nav course needs a compass. So there you go. I could match that mission. Contact three divers randomly that you used to be former divers, former students, club members, store members. Some of you go, well, you know, I know Joe used to dive. I did that several years ago to this one person because I was following this protocol. And his name is Brian Backland. He hadn't dove in many years. He used to do it professionally. Got out of it. And it's not fun when it was work. Um, was it working a desk job in IT? And I can, I just basically can continue to talk to him and email him and talk to him and eventually I convinced him he just came out, kitted him up, started diving again. And yes, I'm proud to say he is a NAWI instructor nowadays. So it does work. Does it work on all of them? No, but it works on enough. You just got to think what's going to work for me that I'm prepared to do every day that will meet the mission that I'm trying to accomplish. Again, my mission, we know about by now. And I'm okay sending a couple of emails. I'm okay making a couple of phone calls. I like talking, as you probably have figured out by now. And whether you're talking on the phone, whether you're talking in person, in a line to get a cup of coffee, outside the local pool or at the local beach. When we are meeting people at a local dive site, a shore dive that is, uh, what we always do is we always have a designated person that's available to talk to people. Because if you're kidding up, it may not be very safe for you to be distracted and talking. So we generally have an appointed person who's there just to discuss it. And they're generally somebody who's a dive master or instructor who's a bit more versed in what you can say and not. And it's amazing how we find new members for our club, new students for our school, and some gear sales just by focusing on our mission. Get people diving locally, get them in continued ed, sell them some gear. Talking to people, calling people, emailing people, those are my three threes I do every day. And you notice I said threes. It's the mini threes marketing plans, the mini three. Everything you do by do by three, which includes pick three topics. Don't just pick one of these topics, pick three. It doesn't matter what three. If there's nothing on that list that you can get three out of, pick something that you can. It could be I give three T-shirts out a day. No, well, if you have the budget for that, great. Just randomly give a T-shirt to a stranger or a ball cap. Whatever it is, do it three times a day and have three topics. 
that you do three times a day to accomplish your mission. Where do we start? Sounds great. I'm sure you're probably on that may work for Bill, but I can't see how it's going to work for me. Here's the steps. Define your mission. We've defined my mission. Clearly by now, you, you, you know that, right? And again, you notice my mission had three things. What a coincidence. Now, I'm trying to get people to dive locally, continue dead, sell them some gear. I know my mission. Which of my threes would accomplish that mission? And who would have people to connect with? People who walk along the waterfront generally like to look at the water. People who don't like the water rarely walk at the water. So if it's in the middle of the bush and it's a nice, wonderful hiking trail, that may not be your best target market. Maybe it is. I don't know. You know your area better than I do. So the key is, is to absolutely accomplish your task by trying to decide who it is I'm trying to talk to. If you're a professional educator focusing on college students, maybe the pool at the local college is going to work for you. Yeah, somebody said, as asking me, what is, how do I decide what works in my area? And that's a, that's a really good question. And I appreciate that. Uh, one thing that is really look at your typical people you're teaching. That's one area. If your average person that's coming in to talk to you about learning to dive is always asking certain questions, they're not the only ones in your community. Or you could ask yourself, why am I not getting enough people? What is it they're looking for? Just go out and start talking to people about diving in general and see what their answers are. And what you'll find is that um, you'll be able to exist better by knowing what they're looking for. Money versus time. The big struggle we've all have in life on every facet of life. How much time do you want to spend doing something or how much money do you want to spend doing something? Depending on your budget, you may hire people to run around town. You may take, you say if you're in a bigger store and you have several instructors and dive masters and trainee candidates for dive master or instructor, Maybe you can make them wear a t-shirt with your logo, your phone number, and learn to dive on it or ask me about diving on it. That works great. Maybe your budget is, um, I can make a, take a piece of paper and write something. It doesn't matter. Pick your budget and work with your budget. Build sales and then spend more money. And the sales, generally speaking, a lot of people use numbers like 4% of sales for advertising or 5% or 2% or 10%. Um, that's up to you and your business model, but you should be spending something on sales. And if you, if you say, I can't afford it, then you need to go back and look at your pricing because you should be able to budget something for doing that. But you know, talking to people is free and word of mouth is very powerful. I've had many ones outside the local pool that we teach at are always like, oh yeah, go talk to him about scuba diving. It's free. It's absolutely free. I'm just standing there talking, right? So that's one way we can we can do that. And it's a really easy system to work with. Perhaps as we go into this, we you know, we, we hear about people being ambassadors um, for our products. That's nice. Um, you may or may not be able to afford to hire somebody to do it. Maybe it's just a local person that's really known for scuba diving. Ask people, talk to people, see how we can share. People like to be part of the success, uh, success story. So don't be afraid to tell them what you're doing and that you want to bring in more students and that you're a quality teacher of scuba and that you want to see things done right. And you'd be amazed how a lot of times people will want to partner with you, whether that's the local city for Parks and Rec or whether that's local divers, whether that's uh, somebody who owns property on the water that says you can use it, just start talking to people and you'll see what works and then adapt it for you. Okay. There's no secret answer how much time or how much money, but the secret is, is to do three things in three different areas consistently every day. That's a lot to talk about. So maybe it's a good time to just sit for a second and come up with a couple of examples of how could this really work? Chris? Now, what I want to do is take two examples, a very simple example and a more complex example. I have no money, not a dime. I just spent $10,000 buying scuba gear. I'm starting up. I just want to start teaching scuba. I haven't got another penny to spend. How can I make a plan? So let's go through our stuff. What's our, what's our mission here? Well, I would assume for this person, their mission probably is I need people to dive locally. So I, can, I, I got to attract students. And I have this gear that I need them to use as rentals 
for the courses and I need them to hopefully buy some gear. Maybe it's not buy. Let's make it simple and just say, hey, I have this rental gear. I need to teach students. That's it. I need to teach so that I can use the gear, pay my insurance, pay my fees, pay my gear, and pay for this little compressor that I have to fill the tanks. Great. That's a simple mission. Again, I noticed I hit three things in there. What am I looking to accomplish by doing this? Well, one would argue that that was in your mission, but it really isn't. What am I trying to accomplish? Well, the word's profit. If you have $10,000 out, your return on investment has to come in. How soon do you want to get your money back? Is it two years, one year? What are the operating costs? Again, we're going to talk more about some of these in other sessions. But um, what am I looking to accomplish? I'm looking to make money. So if I want to make, say it's a part-time gig on the side and I'm only doing it on Saturdays, I need to make at least $200 from my pocket on a Saturday. In addition, I need to take and put at least, whatever, I'm just going to randomly pick up numbers, $200 towards repaying my gear. And my cost of being here that day for air and snacks and whatever is about $100. So if that was your number, that's $500. And again, that's far from accurate, just randomly picking numbers. So if I'm looking at $500, what do I need for $500 of income on a Saturday? That's what I'm looking to accomplish. What do I need to make $500? Depending on the prices in your area, you may say that's one new student. You may say that's two new students. You may say, well, a course is 10 sessions. So I need to have my course cost divided by 10 equals whatever times so many students. It's, it's, it's just math. Do your math and say, I need to be running four Discover Scubas and have two classes with at least two students in it on a Saturday. And if I do that, I've, I've, I've accomplished my mission of profitability. It's hard to, to do it in a vague way, but that's what you're looking to accomplish. And I think too often people fail to use that word profit, thinking it's a bad thing. It's not. It's a very important thing. And whether you're a PE, a store, an independent, if you're not making money, I mean, you know, you can pour as much water into that top of that funnel as you want, but eventually that pot's going to run empty and you're done. So you want to keep more up here in the pot than you do going down through that filter. So make a point of my mission that I have will help me accomplish my goal of profit. In order to do that, what's the best? Well, I live right on the lake, right beside a beach. On the weekend, not during COVID, but the rest of the, my life, <laughs> and next year too, I hope, is there's lots of people on that beach on Saturdays and Sundays. Well, if I could attract a small number of them to come over and do a Discover Scuba, I can charge each of them for the Discover Scuba $50 a person. That's $200. Well, that's 200 toward my 500. So, okay, in order to co connect with people, I need to have a banner that says, would you like to try Scuba or try Scuba here? So that's simple enough to do how do i connect with these people and anytime you do just what's the best thing people are going to see you di putting dive gear on they're going to come over and ask you questions anyways why not put a sign up saying hey try scuba that's all you need try scuba and people putting gear on they'll come over what threes are going to accomplish this the best the best threes are hmm talk to people hand out coupons Handle business cards. Three people. I'm going to talk to those people. I'm also going to handle business cards to other people. And again, every time I handle a business card, I handle three or a coupon or a flyer or any of those. So those are the threes that you could be doing. Um, in this case, I don't know that a photo would help, but maybe it would. You could put up a couple pictures if there's something really cool right there that they can see on a Discover Scuba that's shallow and simple. Um, but at least have a script of going, oh, yeah, we uh, I'm taking you for experience. You can experience underwater juggling because I have a little section over here that I've got some golf balls and my dive masters are ready and I'll bring you there. We play underwater Frisbee. We do underwater golf ball juggling. I have uh, underwater torpedoes. That would be part of my script. And frankly, that is what we do as part of the Discover Scuba. Once they get some basic stuff that they're ready, we take them over, have a fun encounter where they get out and go, that was really cool. We do actually do underwater cup, cup stacking as well. Not silly, but people love it. That would be my script. 
time and place. Well, on that beach on a Saturday. I'm going to do the threes every Saturday. Now, this was not a seven day a week one. This is a once a week. Every Saturday, I'm going to be there on that beach because I need to bring in the money I need to accomplish to make my profit. That's a simple plan. It's a little fast, but there's a plan. It's as hard as that. But now I'm committing to I'm going to be out every Saturday, ready to have a little discussion with minimum three people for discovers, minimum three people on courses, and hand out a minimum of three um, coupons or flyers or whatever. Pretty easy to come up with that. Not a lot to commit to. So that's a simple one. A little harder. How about we focus on a particular course? Whether that course is a instructor specified specialty, which I'm a fan of, that now is the only one that offers those. We did a uh, couple of talks on that already. Uh, or whether it's a regular course, you know, your beginner course, learn to dive. Let's make this a little more challenging. I want people to learn how to dive with a full face mask. Okay. Oh, that's really cool. How does that work? Well, depending if you have comms in them or not, you could do it a different way. But let's just say I want to, I just spent a few thousand dollars buying some full face masks with communication sets so we can talk underwater and do this. Well, how do I, what, what's my mission here? Well, it's not for beginners. So my mission is going to have to be, I'm looking to attract existing divers to continuing education. Okay, and to dive locally and be interested in perhaps buying a full face mask. That's a good mission. What I'm doing through that, what I'm looking to accomplish with that is profit. What are my costs? What do I need to calculate my costs out, which we'll go into another day, how to calculate costs. And by calculating that cost out, I now know this is what I need per person and that's how many people I need. Great. What's the best way to accomplish this? Well, I guarantee it's not standing in the middle of the forest. Is it standing at a poolside? Maybe. At the side of the lake where guys are diving? Absolutely. Local dive clubs, local you know stores, if you're working with that particular store. Um, who, who do I want to connect with? Basically, the answer is existing divers that you're looking to connect with and get them out diving locally with a full face mask so great based on that what threes would be the best way to accomplish that well my threes would be parking lot johnson's beach on a saturday there's five or six groups there all the time great it's perfect time to go out bring up my full face mask talk about full face masks maybe i identify that that's the group leader for that particular group talk to the group leader make a deal with them they may not be able to teach full face mask. It's a specialty. So one of my threes would be attracting that communication verbally with those people in that parking lot. Minimum three people every Saturday. Not a problem. That's easy. Social media groups. Lots of groups on social media. Pick your platform. Look for local divers. Say, hey, I'm now teaching a full face specialty with comm systems. Man, this is really cool. That could be something I'm looking to accomplish. Okay, so that's perhaps two. Talk to them, social media, and then talk to a few local clubs or stores that may or may not be able to accommodate it. That's three different things you can do. Again, now with my three targets, each of those targets three times every day, or if you're doing this part time, it's three times twice a week or whatever it happens to be. Develop a script. When I approach that dive master or instructor from that dive club or store, what is it I'm going to say to them? Face it, if they're running a club or a store, they need to make a buck too. So tie them in somehow. Make a, make a package that's appealing to them. Hey, I'm not sure if you guys do this, but I teach this and I'd love to cut you in on it. And here's a package. I reward you with this and you share with your club accordingly. So there's an idea. So you've got your script. And same with social media, same with whatever you whatever your threes are, have a script or photo. Social media, me with my brand new Guardian mask on. Ooh, it's exciting. I show that to divers, they start to drool and get all excited. Perfect. Pick your time and place. Where's the best times and places to hit those threes? 
and then start today. Just to let you know that the upcoming sessions, we're going to be talking about insurance. We had to reschedule that one. Um, the insurance and your dive business is coming up next. Um, again, we have people on board right now, right on this episode from all over the world. So insurance varies from area to area. And we're the best we do is give it a nice general overview. So we're going to give an overview of types of insurance that you could have for your dive business. And so you can identify what you might need when you source it locally. Uh, we're going to look at how to source out funding programs in your areas. There's lots of options you may be able to tie into. And the third one is attracting new divers with a focus on careers. Okay, so we have lots more topics. We just got three of them listed here. Other than that, have a great day. Bye now. <laughs>